Hello, I'm Kevin Fields, better known as CamNet on the OpenTTD forums, and this is my Let's Play for my OpenTTD Birth of an Empire scenario that I created for OpenTTD Spring Patch Pack 2013. Now this one uses Spring 2013 Patch Pack version 2.1.143, which was released in March of 2014, so it's a little bit older version of the Patch Pack but I found that my scenario was not playing in the newer one, which is unfortunate, which means I'm going to have to go back and redo it if I ever get that much time of my life and I'm willing to give up all that much time of my life. It took me a really long time to develop it. I'm really proud of it, so I want to show it off. But that's the version that you'll need. Um, if you want to find the scenario, it's available on the uh, TTF forms under Birth of an Empire. I also uploaded it to the Reddit OpenTTD group, and I do not have it on Bananas because I don't want regular vanilla OpenTTD stock players to find that scenario and try to run it and find out they can't run it because of the patch pack and all the new girths that I've got loaded on it. But you can download the base version of that along with the new girths that I suggest on the forums. I'm using a version that I've modified for my tastes, which is going to have a whole lot more new GURPS in it. The one that I released just has a basic set that allows anybody just to get started. Of course, feel free to open up the scenario editor and customize it all you want. So before we get started here, we're going to make sure that we've got some music playing. And of course, I'm going to choose the Scott Joplin Anthology. It was my first music pack that I got to release for OpenTTD several years ago. And since we're going to be playing in a pre-1900 era game, I figure that might fit in just fine, even though ragtime music didn't come along until like the 1890s. So anyhow, we're going to play our scenario here just as soon as I locate it. There it is. And we're going to let OpenTTD do its thing and make sure our new GURFs are loaded. And here we go. And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting because my laptop's a little slow, but that's okay. Except when I get impatient. Then maybe it's not okay. Or I get a lot impatient, and this is really not okay. And I'm not going to go back and bother trying to edit this video either, so I apologize. You have to sit with it right through me, or skip ahead 30 seconds, 60 seconds. I promise you're not going to miss too much. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start off in my favorite city, Buffalo. This is where, when I originally played the scenario after I built it for the first time, I found I had the best luck with getting my empire started and set up here. So we're going to open up a music player, and we're going to play a little bit of music. Oh yeah, there we go. And we're going to crank those effects up. We're going to cut the music down a little bit. We don't want it to overshadow my voice here. But just to give you a rough look around at my map, one of the things I love about the Spring 2013 Patch Pack is that it allows you to build these incredible height levels. Um, I've got this cranked up to a height level of 60. You can do all the way up to 256 on it. But you can see I've got this uh, quite a bit of farmland right in around here once you zoom in here you see this is like a, a deep deep hole that you got to dig your way out of and then we get into these mountainous areas and I can't remember I, I may have trees turned off so let me double check that uh, yeah I've got trees turned off so let's turn that on oh wow look at that all those trees everywhere and I know people don't like trees and, and it can I agree it can get annoying sometime 
and it's kind of hard to see the mountain through the trees here literally but the beautiful thing is that when I've got the trees turned on it kind of hides some of the gems in the game here um, you can't see all the resources that I set up here so going over the map here a little bit one of the things I tried to do with this scenario is that I only set players up with the primary industries um, and just a very few secondary industries that you're really gonna have to work to try to get transported to if you want to start making some money with the game so let's turn these trees back off and you can you can see like some of my high mountain areas here now the the primary industries that I did pack you with I densely packed like here we've got lots of oil and chemicals that you're going to be able to draw up from this mountain and I've got them all over this mountainside over here and when you look over towards the north end of the map you've got all these forests just waiting for you to pull resources out of and start processing but when you start looking around you're going to see that it ain't going to be easy to get those because all I've got on this section of the map is if you'll notice right over here where I'm running my mouse just a little bitty ragged rural road and it's jagged and it's all curved so you're, you're gonna have a tough time pulling these resources out all this mountain here it is all covered up in snowy roads and if you think that you're just gonna get away and say oh I'm just gonna ignore industry for right now I'll just ship passengers haha -ha, think again look at this town right here only 729 passengers you're gonna find that you're not going to have an easy time transporting passengers on this one either and I'm trying to find my town directory because I can't remember where it's at there we go town directory let's sort by population we've got lots of little itty bitty towns two people four people six people and most of those are, are mainly exist just to have a connection point somewhere on the map or maybe to support an industry our biggest town is Springdale just 2,000 passengers and so yeah when you zoom out here here's my biggest city on the map and it only has a little windy road that connects you to another town of 125 people so setting up transport is going to be difficult setting up your industry chains is going to be difficult and that's why I did this I and I built it on the most challenging map I could build this is a uh, 2048 by 2048 map it, it's fairly huge by TTD standards and there's mountains everywhere but I didn't make it so difficult that it's not able to be conquered um, along a lot of these contours you can lay roads you can lay rail um, it's not very well suited for airports but you're not gonna get into airports until like the early 20th uh, early 20th century so we're, we're not gonna be playing that far anyway so but just to give you an overview of how big how massive this place is yeah it's it's a huge honking place but I have a lot of fun so hey here we are back at Buffalo again and just to take a look at your surroundings around Buffalo here we've got a lot of farmland up in here and some farmland up in here and more farmland up in here so we can do a lot of farming and I've got a bauxite mine right here we've got a quarry right here another bauxite mine so we've got some industry that we can start mining but we really don't have a lot of places to process this stuff so you know you're, you're gonna have to like I said you're gonna have to work your butt off to find out what you're doing uh, Millville down here a lot more flat land in this nice little valley and then you've got these hillsides you're gonna have to get up and it around but Buffalo is where I like to start because you've got the stockyard right here so and that's gonna be the main place it's gonna be processing my food here on the map Buffalo is my biggest city in the area so eventually uh, building passengers is gonna be important so right now though for Buffalo to be able to grow it's going to need some food 
So as you can see, the town is not growing yet. Um, do we got a game script here? I can't remember if I loaded a game script on this one. Yes, uh, Balanced City Growth. A um, little bit older. There may be a couple other game, uh, game scripts that are better suited for this by now, but I, I was quite satisfied with how this one operated. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to... I'm not going to do a lot of fancy stuff at first. I, I'm known for using a lot of eye candy. I'm not going to get started with a lot of eye candy. I will get into that later. So we'll start with a little simple platform here, um, just to get you inside the city limits. Passengers, mail, food, hey, there we go. Right there. And then, a uh, little annoying bump landscaping, we'll, we'll clear that out there. I'm not going to have trains going up and down a hump, that's ridiculous. And I'm not very fast with building rail either, so I know a lot of people know how to do it with keyboard. I don't. I've been playing this for several years. I've never found any reason to use keyboard for any of the commands. I like a slow, simple game. So that's what we'll stock, stick with. And for now, we'll build a little stockyard area right here. And then we're going to build our train depot right here. And then how am I going to get around? Let's see, we've got some flat ram that runs over in here, but then it gets right into this steep mountain area. And, and where, where I was planning on laying my lines was right down in these flat areas but it's covered in farmland and that's going to be freaking expensive to build on ladies and gentlemen and i've only got two hundred thousand dollars to build and that is slowly dwindling so i have to be very careful on how i'm going to build stuff so we'll cart some route over here Now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get down this steep little mountainside here without too much trouble. That's not going to work either. So I'm just going to do it this way, and I know some people are going to complain. I don't care. I like building tracks the way I like building tracks. And here we go. Promising little shortcut over here.
And you have to remember, we're starting here in 1860 as well. So your trains are going to be a little bit slower. They're going to be a little less unpowered. So we're going to have to build out the slopes just a little bit more until we get some better engines. And I'm building this just mostly for, for eye candy, just because I want to see the choo-choos run. You know what, I will just go ahead and make that passing loop right there. And I could probably build another one right up here. That one may be a little bit ugly, but that's okay. What is the worst thing that can happen, right? from bottoming out on here. We've got a farm here. Yeah, and all that farmland is going to be really expensive to build on. There's a farm over there. And here's one part of my scenario which I didn't really correct yet, I don't believe. I may, I may have. I, I don't remember. It's been a while. But right over in here, we've got this mill, and we need an area to... Uh, to put some trains to build on it and to, to expand on the mill area here. Where do I want to put these platforms? Well, I tell you what, I, I do want some platforms right over here, and I want to be able to expand those. but I think my main line runs like right there. So we're gonna put these right here for now. And then we'll build us a little rail bridge to get right over this hump and uh, We'll do just a little concrete bridge there. And then in the meanwhile... I think for now I am just going to cheat a little and I will put my station right there. We'll go ahead and build in some of this infrastructure. I'm going to need some 
truck stations over here. And they're going to have to be the roll through type and got those put in we've got a little bus station and Millville already doesn't like the the construction that I've done which is unfortunate all right we're going to get back to the trains here um, I'm going to drop a depot right here and then back to burning up some cash Yeah, you can see how expensive this building is going to get. So we've got a little bit of steam that we, we can build up right here, so... So yeah, we've burned up a lot of cash here already, and so I'm probably going to stop right there with building stuff. Um, got a mixed farm right here with some livestock, and that's where I'm just going to build a, a small station here to start getting that livestock. us a little train. Let's see, and we're going to find our trains by none, an engine ID by introduction date. Let's see what we have here. Our oldest one is, of course, the Stevenson Rocket, one of the first trains uh, that was ever built. Uh, what can we afford here? We've got a budget of $77,000 left. And the 222 Lady will cost us $32,000. This will cost us $30,000. That's for passenger and that's for freight. So that one looks a little better. Let's see if we can save some money. Oh, we get uh, 450 horsepower here for a couple thousand dollars less. They're both 35 miles an hour. Get more tractive effort out of this one. Lower, lower cost and better reliability. So hey, that may be a better one. We've got that one, the Crampton at 32,000. And I've got another one of them down here. So 28,000, 25,000. need a little bit attractive effort on there so I think we will go ahead and go with the Vulcan maybe
Oh, I can't make up my mind here. Yeah, for 28,000, I think the Vulcan is going to strike the right balance here. Then we're going to go for some livestock vans. And, oh, this is ugly. Apparently, I've screwed up something with my new girths here. And I will have to go fix it sometime. So, that's not going to work. So, we've got a choice of a 7-ton light flat car or a 7-ton open wagon. Now, I know with the newer versions of OpenTD, you don't need to do the, the full load, but I kind of prefer it that way. I'm just old-fashioned like that, so. We'll get that train started here in just a minute. Let's see, and our train is going to need a point at which it can turn around here, because I didn't build that station very well, so. How about if... We pause this for just a second and let's see, do I have the right signal here? I'm not sure. Let's see, and then that's the one-way path signal, is it not? Yeah, that's the one-way. Okay, so I've got the right one. Let's see if the train reverses as I expect it to here. No, it's not going to. Alright, so... Let me build in a little reverse loop. Which is, of course, going to cost me more money. There we go. Now it's going to do the loop-de-loop -loop there. And that'll work quite all right. So speaking of loop-de-loops, -loop where I built all these passing loops I need to build in. except I've done forgot how to build signals. Oh, I've got choo-choo! 
starting up. I didn't realize I had Choo Choo enabled. I probably should have looked at that before I started. That might be a little unfortunate. Alright, I'm not going to worry about the signaling on the rest of the line there. station or no we're gonna build a truck station <clears throat> right near the main of Buffalo station. We're going to build ourselves a little garage. And look at this. We've got horsies. Yes. Let's see. We're going to be hauling food. And apparently we've got futuristic motorized vehicles in here as well, thanks to Long Vehicles 5 which is, of course, the update to Georgia's Long Vehicles 4, except it's not officially released. I got it from somewhere. I don't remember. So let's get the two-horse icebox carriage. And we'll load her up for food. And we'll get that started. Uh, great. I'm in the red already here in Buffalo. That's not good. Because now I can't build anything. I should have put that on pause. Local authority says that I am very poor. Well, let's see if they will let me drop in a passenger station here. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Then we are just going to have to start a passenger train service, and I've only got $30,000 left. So not a lot of money to do with it. No, we're going to have to go really cheap. So introduction date. We're going to switch this over to cost. The Lady Steam is 32000 The... Boiler one is 25 miles per hour, $11,000. And here we've got a train that'll do uh, 100 miles per hour on light freight. And 85 miles per hour on passenger. Now I'm not sure what to do. I think we'll grab... This one here. It'll keep up with the others. And then... Light passenger carriage, 14 passengers, $936. We'll go with the cheapest one here. And then we'll throw a mail coach on here, too. Bill doesn't seem too upset with this. Well, that's good. 
I've got this on fast forward a little bit. Alrighty, now that we've gotten started here, it looks like my trains are going to be coming to a point here really soon. And yes, there we go. They are having to wait. And we'll see if Millville gets any passengers here soon. Meanwhile, we'll stream across the map and we'll see if Buffalo has any passengers here. No, no passengers yet. Uh-oh. What happened to my train down here? What were my instructions? No unloading and take- oh no! How 
horrible and unfortunate. Yes, you need to chug, chug, chug all the way back over there. We are burning cash here, buddy. We've only got $8,400 left. forgot I needed to fix that again. So we'll wait for my passenger train to get out of the way. Hey, we've got two passengers up there at Buffalo Woods. Awesome. And hey, we have made $5,000. We're making a little bit of profit. Awesome. any money to bribe the council here? No. No money to bribe the council. We are just stuck for now. And Millville has one passenger now. Awesome. And we've got 75% food right here, so... This dude a good one. Oh, and I forgot. these passing loops, they're not going to be nice to each other. You can tell it's been a while since I've played Open TTD. Doesn't that look neat, watching him go down the mountain like that? Turn our trees on. Yeah, look at that. That's kind of neat. That's kind of scenic. I do admit the computer is running a little high on the CPU right now, so hopefully this all comes out okay. And really, this is like 
what I do most in OpenTTD is I'll build something and then I will watch it stream by for a while. This is kind of like why I like playing with patch packs, especially the patch packs that introduce the day length patch where the days pass slower. You know, we've played almost 45 minutes here and we've had one game, one day in game pass. And that's even with fast forward on for quite a bit, so. Time passes slower. It gives me time to sit here and, and just admire everything that I do. And we'll zoom out here a little bit. Looks like things are going to speed back up again. Watch our horse and buggy here make a delivery. And we made $176 from food there. Good deal. And there we go. We've spent 50 minutes to watch me build a small fledgling empire that slowly makes a little bit of profit. Just a very little bit with two trains and a horse and buggy. So we've spent almost 50 minutes doing that. We're going to end that for now. Next video I do, we will show you what I've done several decades into the game as we approach the 1900s. So... Thank you for watching. I apologize if this was too slow, too boring for some people. But I hope you had a relaxing time like I did, just building and having some fun. So we will see you next time.